Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at manifestations and how they work in the new edition of 4th edition. And yeah, there's a lot of really crazy changes here. So Games Workshop have dropped a new article about manifestations and it even includes faction terrain and everything that we knew of these two things have completely been thrown out the window and we have an entire new system. Like This is probably one of the biggest changes so far that they've shown us. Um, so yeah, let's just jump in and have a look. So basically the way that this works now is manifestations are basically being clumped together into their own little spell laws. And obviously your spell laws are... Basically you've got your faction ones, you'll have your seasonal ones, no doubt. Um, but you can also take one of these on top of your faction spell law. Um, so you're not sort of limited to just the one. But they've all been sort of lumped together, so as you can see... The Forbidden Power has all been together with these four spells, um, the four endless spells. And we have the Morbid Conjunction, which is, has these. So if you want to take the Purple Son of Heesh, this is what you would take. Um, the Machineries has got the Cogs, the Swords, Pendulum. Obviously, Cogs and Pendulum were quite um, popular back in 3rd edition. Although the Swords War Scroll is here and does look quite interesting. There's the Burning Head. Endless Life Swarm and the Ravenish Jaws in Primal Energy. And then everyone's favourite, Umbral Spell Portal, is in with the Twilight Sorceries. And then we've got the Horrible Crone Spine because, you know, it's still around. But essentially, you, you basically pick one of these laws and you'll get access to these four or three or however many um, Endless Spells, basically. But Endless Spells do have War Scrolls, and they have changed a lot. So as you can see straight away, they have an armor save, they have a health pool, they have a movement characteristic, and they have um, a banishment. So I imagine the banishment is you're going to use the banish ability, roll a 7 plus on two dice, and you'll get rid of it. Or you can shoot it and beat it up in combat, because it only has an armor save of 5 plus, uh, it only has 6 health, but it does have a ward save of 6 plus. So as you can see that this thing will attack with 12 attacks. It'll hit on 3s, wound on 3s, minus 1 ren, 1 damage. And it does have critical mortal wound damage on natural rolls of 6s to hit. It also, uh, ward saves cannot be made for damage points inflicted by this manifestation. So this is going to be a really nice little one to throw out. Um, and really sort of go hunting down monsters that have got ward saves because they're not going to get it. Um, another thing as well that these things are free. You don't pay points for these anymore. You literally just take the spell rule, the spell law that includes it, and then you're going to be able to summon it. Um, so yeah, very very different. Now there are different ones where the prismatic um, palisade has no movement characteristics, so it can't move around. But there are rules for these things um, in regards to how they sort of react to things around it. So first things first, all manifestations, so models can move through manifestations, but cannot end a move on them, makes sense. Units can finish a charge move within half an inch of them, because we can beat them up in combat, and they can be picked as a target uh, of enemy abilities like shoot and fight, which is always good to know. They can be damaged or destroyed, but cannot count as destroyed units for battle tactics or abilities, so any victory conditions that you're going to be going for that means that you need to kill something killing a manif manifestation isn't going to going to go towards that can only use core abilities or abilities on their war scroll uh, they cannot use commands or be affected by friendly abilities on their specifically affected manifestations now i imagine there's probably going to be some models in the coming in um, like priests and wizards that will have a certain affinity to manifestations and we'll be able to do some skullduggery with them, um, especially if they put that sentence in there. Cannot con contest or control objectives. Brilliant. So moving manifestations, you'll typically need to set up nine inches away from them. So if you're deep striking down or doing any of that, you're still going to have to be nine inches away, just like any other enemy unit. 
and will need to retreat or move out of combat. Typical, you cannot set up within nine inches of an enemy unit when summoned, so you can't, you know, you still again got to treat them like a normal other unit and cannot move in the movement phase uh, after they've been set up. I think the, 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 this is really key. So currently in third edition, when you bring one of these things in, they, they kind of move at the end of the hero phase if they're a predatory spell, but these can't, which is going to be really key on how they're going to be used. Um, so you kind of bring them in up to nine inches away from the enemy or whichever sort of range that you've got to do it. And then they, that's it. They're not going to be moving anymore in that movement phase. So static ones, uh, you can ignore them when setting up units. You can end up move within three inches of them and you can freely move away from them if you want. Cool. Cannot use any abilities that involve moving. Well, that makes sense because they can't move and typically have more freedom to place them when summoned. So we've also got the static ones, which is a nice little wall scroll here. And straight away, you'll notice that the it doesn't have a movement characteristic because it doesn't move um it's got a four up save it's got an eight health and a seven banishment again and a six up ward now one of the things that to take a note in its in its passive ability is you if you set this thing up you can't uh a manifestation can't be targeted by shooting attacks cool in addition a unit can't be targeted if you draw a line of sight through it now reading this as it as raw states that means that you can't shoot a unit that also is on the other side of it so you're you can use this to block your units but you're also going to be gimping yourself by stopping yourself from being shooting at so you're going to kind of need to sort of you know get your head around your line of sight and your target priorities with this um because this one could kind of throw you so Next, we have Faction Terrain, and this is probably one of the biggest changes we've seen so far. Um, Faction Terrain now have health saves and all of that good stuff. Um, the keen-eyed amongst you will also notice the we have some uh, terrain keywords, such as cover, impassable, and obscuring, which are kind of cool. So the Fire Slayers uh, get the Battle Forge, and it has a 3-up save with an 8 health. Now, it probably will have a 6-up ward. Yep, it has a 6-up ward, uh, like most of these manifestations or terrain features. And then, obviously, you've got your once-per-battle army hero phase rule, and then you've got your starting of any turn sort of rule. And again, it tells you what you do and how you do it. Um, the biggest thing is that this can be targeted and shot at and attacked. Now, Games Workshop in the article sort of hint at there is going to be ter faction terrain that can actually fight and move around no idea which one of these it's going to be we imagine it's probably going to be the wormwood the forest and um, because it kind of used to have an attack when you did magic somewhere near it it used to sort of lash out at nearby wizards but i can kind of imagine that the trees are going to be a little bit annoyed and start hitting people uh, maybe the deepkin boats are going to be able to move around the the shipwrecks that would be kind of cool um i can't see the lumineth realm lords um terrain feature being able to move because it's kind of like a floating attached to the floor waterfall um but yeah they've all basically got a save and they've got health so you can easily shoot them and run up and then beat them up in combat so it kind of talks as well about some of the spells and obviously the sylvaneth can have tree song which is one of their main say, things that they've got now and this is an unlimited spell so they can cast this as many times as they want by as many wizards that can cast it. They can only do it once per wizard, but they can still do it as many times as one. Um, and obviously this is to allow them to summon in more and more Whelm Rods. Games Workshop obviously want you to buy these um, these Awakened Whelm Rods, you know, because it's part of the army, so they're going to want you to use them. Um, but yeah, as you can see at the top, it's casted on six, and you basically roll 2d6, and then if there's fewer than three Awaken Realm Mods on the battlefield, you can set up another one. Only within 18 inches of the caster and more than 3 inches from any enemy units, objects, and other terrain features. If there are already 3 of friendly Awaken Realm Mods on the battlefield, you can heal 3 to a friendly. So this can be then used to top up and heal your forest already. So yeah, that's pretty much manifestations. It is a huge departure from what we've got. It's very different, very... Um, 
you've got to give him a hat off to actually doing something this, like this. It's, you know, it's compared to combat and shooting and stuff like that, that's pretty much going to probably work how we're used to it. Um, but this is massively different, which could be kind of fun. Um, as a Cities player, I'm very tempted to sort of maybe look at bringing a couple of them because um, they they're no longer cost points and I might have a wizard or two that'll be able to actually use one. Uh, for Blades of Corn, I will 100% be bringing in the prayer manifestations for the faction because, like, they're going to be really good and key. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of skullduggery with them as well. But, yeah. But that's the video, everyone. If you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff, and check out my uh, members and Patreon areas. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.